President Nana Dudankwe Kufuado, for the Republic of Ghana, widow, her excellent man Rawlings. Children will be laid by Dr. Zanato Rawlings, Honorable, and then the family will be laid by Colonel Retired Joshua Agbuti. And then we have a wreath for the Anglo States, and then the NDC, the ECOWAS, the AU, and the Ghana Armed Forces. By, that will be laid by the Chief of Defense Staff, Lieutenant General Obed Buama Aqua. You're live on Joy News on the Joy News channel on DSTV. We're streaming also on Go TV. You're live on Joy 99.7 FM. It is the state funeral of the late former president Jerry John Rawlins, and uh, ongoing right now is the uh, wreath laying uh, ceremony. The president will lay one on behalf of the state. Uh, the widow would also lay her wreath, and then would have the children, the family, the Anglo states representing the. Uh, larger family, the extended family of the Rawlinses, and then the NDC would also lay one. Uh, the Ghana Armed Forces would follow. After that, would have the ECOWAS as well as the African Union all laying a reef um, at the Black Star Square. And this is coming just shortly after that uh, message uh, by the clergy, uh, encouraging all of us to abide by the principles of Jerry John Rollins. Let's go back to the Black Star Square. And so we have now the reef lane by the widow, Anakuneidu Ajman Rollins. She is in the company of uh, two other women uh, who are leading her to the reef. Um, she just touches it because it's already been done by the military, um, symbolizing the, the action, essentially. And I'm here in the studio with Koji Yangsen and uh, Winston Amwa. Um, it's been such a very solemn ceremony, um, touching tributes from the children, from the widow. And you saw Amina there struggling to finish that tribute written by her mother. And we're describing this for the benefit of those of you listening on Joy 99.7 FM. Could you? Mm. Indeed, it's, uh, it's a ceremony that uh, is befitting of the status of the former president. You can see that the Black Star Square is adorned in all the colors of the military, every section 
of it coming out to pay their last respects. Uh, the family, of course, have, uh, have had to be stoic and strong. And if, you're, if you've been uh, listening on radio, uh, amidst all of the music and the pomp and pageantry and the performances, uh, quietly sitting in their chairs uh, are the, those who are left behind. Uh, Nana Konido Ajiman Rawlings, her three daughters and her son, all of them, uh, you know, behind their masks, uh, clearly, you know, uh, feeling the loss of this great patriarch. But right now, uh, the wreath laying ceremony continues, and uh, the Air Force are the ones who are doing the honors, uh, carrying the wreaths and laying them in place for those uh, in whose name they are being laid to come over, touch them symbolically uh, to demonstrate that they indeed have laid them, uh, the wreaths at. Um, at the feet of their loved one. At the moment, it's the, the children who are coming to touch their wreath, which has already been laid by the Air Force cadets. And uh, right now, the family lines up uh, at a respectful distance, hands clutched in front of them, all four children uh, of uh, former president. And now they take a few tentative steps towards the wreath walking still in line uh, to the farthest right, Kimathi, and then Amina and uh, Zanato, uh, sorry, and then Nayas Antua, Zanato and Amina. Uh, they stand at a respectful distance, uh, and uh, each takes a bow. They, they take a moment to look at the wreath, taking in the symbolism of it, before they turn on their heels, walk back at the same solemn pace, to their seats, led by an usher who will have to make this trip several times today, uh, but no doubt he's prepared for it. They then bow to the president, who is seated directly opposite the reeds, before they assume their seats. There is, of course, a military officer who is announcing uh, in, in order who will next lay wreaths. Former president. Now the children have already laid their wreath. Uh, the next one is being placed by the Air Force and um, we will soon find out which uh, of the grieving loved ones will be laying claim to this particular wreath. So I think it's that family. Um, the family. Yeah, the family. So, so we, we, we were supposed to have the widow first, uh, before then the president, but that has not been done. I'm sure uh, there's been a change, mm. slight change. The president has done it. And so the president has done it, uh, and then we have the widow, the yeah, children, and now the family. Yeah. So that is next now. Mm. Mm. Now a cousin of the former president uh, is uh, visible amongst the, f the extended family members who are coming to uh, lay this particular wreath. Again, the process is the same. They walk solemnly towards the wreath after the armed forces uh, have laid it in place. And then they walk up to it and uh, pay their respects, touch it, say a few words if necessary. And then they turn on their heels and walk back after bowing respectfully to the wreath. This process will be carried out by all of those who are designated to lay wreaths today. Uh, coming up next, we we'll will have the Anglo State, indeed, uh, representing the traditional authority um, in the Volta region. Now, the uh, the Air Force uh, who are on duty laying out the wreaths are very, very smartly turned out. Uh, two female officers uh, doing the honours, and uh, they keep marching in with the wreaths. Uh, in a well-practiced drill, uh, lay it in place, salute sharply, turn on their heels, march away briskly as the family members or whomever is laying the wreath walks up to lay claim to it. Uh, it's a very, uh, <laughs> a very practiced movement that these two soldiers are carrying out uh, to lay it uh, in place and then briskly in time with each other, uh, salute and stand in place for the necessary 
uh, period before they march off as uh, the grieving loved ones come up to uh, claim ownership of it. This one belongs to the Anglo state. Anglo state. And uh, you can see some uh, dignitaries there uh, coming up to lay claim to it. Two of them on this occasion, led by the same usher. Now it's, uh, it, it, it's, uh, it's now the new task, isn't it? To identify people behind their masks, and it's not easy. It isn't, it it's isn't not easy. easy at all. Uh, several people have come up who uh, have not been easily recognizable because of because their masks. Because of the face masks. But uh, it's necessary. Uh, having such a huge national event during a pandemic, uh, you cannot compromise on, uh, on safety, on the protocols. Absolutely. Uh, you certainly cannot be seen to compromise on them, and so uh, that is what we're observing. Mm, which is why I believe that the Air Force cadet was chosen to do this on behalf of the various groups. And Kujo, like you said, it looks very well rehearsed. Precision is very much key when it comes to the military. And they have indicated to us that they have a lot has gone into the preparation for today's event. And as much as possible, they are complying with the COVID-19 protocols. And so, like we've seen throughout, you have representatives from the various groups, you know, come touch it symbolically after it's been laid by the Air Force cadet. And so we've had the widow, we've had the president, we've had the children, the family, and the Anglo state. Next, we're expecting that the National Democratic Congress would also um, lay claim, uh, borrowing from Yukojo, mm. to the reef after it's been laid by the Air Force cadet. And uh, we're waiting to see who does that on behalf of the party. Indeed. Two more female officers take their turn to lay this wreath. And uh, they do the brisk sidestep, two sidesteps, and then they get to the podium, lay the wreath. Then they turn briskly in tandem. They salute, they wait the necessary time before they walk off and leave the wreath in place for the bereaved to claim it. This time it will be the NDC. Uh, quite a number of them coming to uh, perform this duty. And uh, they line up and walk in, uh, sol at a solemn pace towards the wreaths. All of them lined out at the foot of uh, the casket of the former president, the late Jerry John Rawlings. They've done their part. They walk so back. So this back is to the, the ECOWAS now, the Economic Community of West African States, now doing their part. Yeah. And so those are the representatives we saw a while ago, laying the wreath on behalf of ECOWAS, the regional body. Now all the music on this occasion uh, is provided by the Air Force Band, and uh, they have a column of uh, percussionists. Uh, who are performing some well-known somber tunes and uh, they have all been on duty all day. No doubt it's hard work but they are honoured to do it in, uh, in memory of their former colleague, Flight Lieutenant Jerry John Rawlings. And so for the NDC, I see there the National Chairman Samuel Fusan Pafo I also see the, the 2020 vice presidential candidate, Professor Nana Jane Opokwajiman. And we also Al -Haji see Alhaji Huduyaya in there, three of them mm. representing the National Democratic Congress. Yeah. They take Chairman, a bow there. Running mate and a member of their, uh, I believe, their uh, Council of Elders. Yeah. And so these three represented the NDC in the lane of the wreath. And, and, and for Hudu Yaya, you know, he was General Secretary of the NDC from 1992 to when the party was formed to 2002 when they went for elections and he became mm -hmm. Vice uh, Chairman of the NDC until eventually contested and lost. So he's been with the Rawlinses. He used to be part of, uh, you know, those, um, the cadres, mm -hmm. and he's been there with Rawlins right from the start. And you, you can understand why he also had to read the tribute from the NDC. Absolutely. It does make sense. And so the wreath lane is still ongoing at uh, the Black Star Square. 
And uh, very soon we'll find out. Uh, last on the list is the African Union. Uh, they will do so and then we'll have some prayer for the family uh, according to the program. Uh, that is supposed to be done by the Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams. And so this is supposed to be the very final wreath that will be laid by the African Union. And there you have the representative there. Now the Air Force cadet has done so. The representative will march forward and then take a bow like we've seen the other girls do. Well, he decided to touch it and then now take a bow. I think the, the, uh, the Air Force cadets are really facilitating the smooth uh, process here at the Independence Square. They are very well organized, you can see them uh, forming some sort of um, assembly line, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, about eight or ten female officers involved in this exercise. Uh, they, they come up in pairs, each of them ready and standing by. So as one pair leaves, another one gets ready to bring the next wreath. So there are no gaps in between and they're ensuring that this process is as smooth as possible. Something which uh, those sitting in the sun will be thankful for, no doubt. Of course, this is an important uh, an important day, uh, but there is no substitute for punctuality and brevity. Absolutely. And so it is the state funeral of the late former president, Jerry John Rollins, live at the Black Star Square. The wreath lane ceremony has just ended. And according to the program, we expected to have some prayers being offered as well as thanksgiving and that is supposed to be led by the Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams. This is the final wreath. I believe this is being laid in, in on, uh, by the armed forces. Yeah. By the armed uh, forces. Yeah. That's uh, Lieutenant General Aqua, uh, who's the Chief of Defence Staff, mm. uh, laying it on behalf of the Ghana armed forces. Indeed. And uh, you don't need to be told you're watching a soldier at work with his upright frame and brisk salute, all in honor of his fallen comrade, Flight Lieutenant Jerry John Rawlings. Yeah. Mr. President, Excellencies, and distinguished ladies and gentlemen, who have laid wreaths on our behalf, we are most grateful. The clergy will kindly continue with the service. Thank you. All right, and so uh, that is the end of the wreath laying ceremony. The Air Force cadets, the female cadets, have marched off the uh, square. And uh, now we expect her to uh, have the Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams lead in some prayers for the family first, and then some thanksgiving. Let's go back to the Black Star Square. May we stand, please? From the tree on to the trees and the shine, he lead to every fall is if I'm quish and Christ. He's long indeed. Our Heavenly Father, we are guarded from different works of life. And many have come from the land 
and breath of this nation. Some have come by air and others by water and by land. With a heavy heart, as we gather to witness the home going of a patriarch, a friend, a father, a charismatic leader, one that made a difference in all of our lives, we now recognize that we understand that our understanding is limited in times and moments like this. We pray for the wife and every one of the children, the grandchildren, and the entire family, that you, the father, of the fatherless will father his children. But you, the God and the husband of widows, will comfort Nana. In the name of Jesus, praying for his family that history will treat them kindly. And remember them for good and not for evil. The thou, O God, that answereth prayer, will bow your head, and that you will attend and hearken to our petitions, intercessions, and prayers. And grant to everyone in the name of Jesus that is grieving for the loss of a loved one, a friend, the comfort so needed from you at this difficult, challenging time in the life of the family of our late president. Shield them, comfort them, protect them, deliver them, guide them, and let none at his departure face any life-threatening situation. May they be preserved and may they escape every danger and challenges that is ahead. I pray now in the name of Jesus, you spirit an angel of death. It is enough. Stay your hand. Pass over. Stand down. Relinquish your powers. Pass over this family and pass over all the grieving families of this nation. In the name of Jesus, the Son of God, Heavenly Father, from Zinato, in the name of Jesus, to all the siblings, Yas and Tuan, in the name of Jesus, to Amina, to Kimati, we pray that you will be with them and help them to make sense of the unanswered questions on their mind. For it is you and you alone in times like this that can help us to make sense of the things we can make sense of. Heal, comfort, all the grieving people of Ghana. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. We are still standing to do the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, As it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thou is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. We'll take announcements. Excellencies, proud to the announcement, I wish to respectfully acknowledge the President of the Republic and Commander-in-Chief of the Ghana Armed Forces, Nana Adodanka Ekufu Ado, and the First Lady, Mrs. Rebecca Ekufu Ado. I wish to also acknowledge the President of the Republic of Liberia. His Excellency, Dr. George Mane Weir, and the First Lady, Lady of Li Liberia. Next, I acknowledge the President of the Republic of Sierra Leone, His Excellency, Dr. Julius Mada Bill, and the First Lady of Sierra Leone. I wish to also acknowledge Vice President of the Republic of Ghana, Al Haj, Dr. Mamudu Baumia, and the Second Lady, Mrs. Samira Baumia. May I respectfully acknowledge former President of Ghana, His Excellency John Ajekum Kufo. Former President of Ghana, His Excellency John Dramani Mahama. I wish to also humbly acknowledge former First Lady Nana Kunedu Ajiman Rollins, the children, and the bereaved family. Ladies and gentlemen, please permit me to also acknowledge former President of the Republic of Benin, His Excellency Yai Boni. Also here with us is Prime Minister of Niger, His Excellency Brigi Rafini. I humbly acknowledge the President of the ECOWAS Commission. His Excellency Jean-Claude Casibro. And all the distinguished foreign dignitaries representing their governments and people, you are most acknowledged. I wish to continue by acknowledging the Speaker of Parliament of Ghana, Right Honorable Alban Kingsford Sumana Bagbin and the Honourable Members of Parliament. Next, I wish to kindly acknowledge the Chief Justice of Ghana, His Lordship Justice Kwesi Enim Yewa, and member, members of the judiciary. May I humbly acknowledge the Chief of Staff designate at the Jubilee Hall, Honorable Akosia Freeman Osei Opari, and Ministers of State designate. Next, I acknowledge the Chairman and members of the Council of State, their officiating clergy, members of the Diplomatic Corps, Heads of Security Service, our venerable traditional authorities, members of the media, and all ladies and gentlemen here gathered.
Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, before the final commendation and upon closing of the burial service, the casket will be lifted and the cortege will proceed from here, the Black Star Square, towards the direction of the Osu Castle. The order of march is as follows. Leading will be the quad bikes, followed by the cavalry, the escort, firing parts, the band, clergy, the gasket on the gun carriage, pall bearers, the family, wreath bearers, insignia bearers, chief mourners, a presidential representative, mourners in uniform, mourners not in uniform, the rear detached, and vehicles in that order. From the Osu Castle Junction, the cottage will embark on the drive through some principal streets in Accra. They will first head towards the ridge runabout, continue on the castle road through the Accra Psychiatric Hospital traffic intersection onto the Kwame Nkrumah Avenue. Subsequently, the cottage will head towards the Kwame Nkrumah interchange and branch onto the Ring Road Central towards the GBC area and onto the Aquaje interchange and then proceed to, to the 37 military hospital. On the Gifford Road, the cottage will move to Bemakam and turn around at the Air Force Base and then back on the Gifford Road, branch off the Airport Hills Bypass and finally end at the military cemetery. There will be a helicopter escort and an honorary helicopter flyover at the military cemetery. I wish to kindly add here that the clergy that will be proceeding to the military cemetery will be conveyed with a military Ankai bars to the cemetery. Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, after this service, it is requested that we all remain for Mr. President, the Vice President, visiting heads of the state, and other dignitaries to depart from this location before the rest of us follow. A departure schedule will be announced after the service. Thank you very much. And of course, Seb, we've heard the acknowledgments of several dignitaries attending the burial service of the former president, late Jerry John Rawlings. Uh, we will, we'll at this point in the program, hear the final commendation by the Most Reverend Philip Name, who is the Archbishop of Tamale, Diocese of the Catholic Church. He also happens to be the president of the Catholic Bishops Conference. As he makes his way up to the dais, uh, we are still looking forward to another hymn and the closing prayer, after which the armed forces will play the Dead March in Saul and the casket will be lifted for it to begin its final journey through the capital city of Accra, stopping at several key points, all significant, when the story of Jerry John Rawlings is being told. And once that tour is complete, the former president will be laid to rest at the Armed Forces Cemetery in Chado. This indeed will be his very final journey on earth. And now the commendation. Before we go our separate ways, 
let us take leave of our brother. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death. Right, so the final commendation there performed and uh, the Archbishop of Tamale walking around the casket performing the Catholic rites spreading what appears to be incense as part of the commendation ceremony the very final act of former President Rawlings' church, final act of farewell there being carried out by the Archbishop of Tamale. He's assisted by a, a number of um, church officials who uh, look on as he goes round the casket a number of times spreading the incense, speaking those sacred words with which his church commends him to his maker. We will after this have one hymn, but not before the commendation Into is complete. Hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother John Jerry Rawlings in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon John Jerry Rawlings in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servants and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brothers and sisters forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. You shall respond to the following invocations with these words. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. You may now stretch your hands towards the body as a simple gesture of farewell to our dearly beloved Jerry John. Saints of God, come to his aid. 
hasten to meet him, angels of the Lord. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. May Christ, who called you, take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. May eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. May the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and take take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. Shall we please be seated? Right, as the clergy return to their seats, uh, we anticipate one more hymn. Uh, the mass band and the choir will be leading uh, the entire congregation in this one. Uh, but Winston, earlier when we were identifying the, um, the bereaved who were yes, laying the wreaths. Exactly. Yeah, we said that um, the NEC was being represented by al Haji Fudu Yaya. Um, attention has been drawn. There's actually al Haji Mahama Idrisu, mm. uh, who was vice chairman of uh, you know, the Council of Elders, now acting chairman of the Council of Elders. Yes. Um, you said it, well, you know, with a mask and all of that, sometimes it becomes difficult identifying mm. persons. Mm. But uh, thanks very much for So that's um, a bit of correction there. And we're also referring to the military personnel as cadets. Mm. They are not cadets. Yes. They are actually armed force officers, uh, female officers who... Um, were laying the wreaths, and I guess that explains the professionalism with yes. which they did their job. Certainly they are seasoned uh, members of the armed forces, um, the Air Force to be specific, uh, in, their, in their blue tunics, uh, looking very much apt and appropriate for the occasion. May we all rise as we take the closing prayer and the benediction. Let us pray. Eternal God, we praise you for the great company of those who have finished their course in faith and now rest from their labors. We praise you for those dear to our hearts, whom we name in our hearts before you today as a nation. Especially, we praise you for the life, the devotion, the dedication and the service of our former president, His Excellency Flight Lieutenant Jerry John Rawlings, whom you have graciously received into your presence. Grant that, that he may sleep here in peace until you awaken him to glory, for you are the resurrection and the life. Then he will see your face, face to face, and be within the light which will shine unto your people. To him and all others who have departed this life, Grant them perpetual light to shine upon them. Eternal God, we commit at this moment once again 
family and friends and all who have come to join us as we bid farewell to our loved one. Grant them the peace of heart. Enable them to go through this state of life with your abiding strong presence. Eternal Father, be with the widow, the children, friends, and all who are touched, especially this nation of ours, Ghana. We also bring before you our president and the entire nation as we go through bereavement. Encourage and strengthen us, O oh Lord, we pray. And let this time of bereavement continue to unite us as one people with a common destiny looking forward to the development of our dear nation. Bless our nation, make us strong, and defend us, O Lord, we pray. By your grace, you brought us here in peace, granting us genuine mercies. As we come to the end of this service and go our separate ways, may your peace and may your face follow and go with us. Let the mercies and the blessings of God be our portion as a nation. Defend us from all perils and dangers on our roads and send us home safe and sound. Let your perpetual light continue to shine onto the path of our former president as he comes home. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon all of you and grant you peace. May the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit remain with all of us now and forevermore. Amen. So the benediction bringing to an end the Catholic burial service of his excellency now the late flight lieutenant jerry john rawlings former president of the republic of ghana so many great men share this attribute that if you say one thing of them it will be the truth but so will the opposite you would call him a disciplinarian and you would be telling the truth you would call him a benevolent, loving, kind, forgiving man, and it would be the truth. You would call him a dictator, and it would be true. You would call him a democrat, and that would also be true. You would call him a saint, and some would agree. You would call him a sinner, and some would say that was true as well. And as he leaves his wide legacy behind, his departure into the next world is marked appropriately by those whose lives he has touched in the most profound way. This final dead march will be performed by the mass choir and the mass bands.
as his coffin is lifted for the final journey to commence. <laughs>